Hi everybody, it's Steven here and today's topic will be slightly older vintage figures than what you most know. What I'm specifically talk going to talk about is the DC action figures from the legendary Super Powers toy line that was made by Kenner back in the distant 1980s. There was a total of about 39 figures I believe all together. I did not look at lately at the visual checklist. I only have some of the characters, not all of them, because it's becoming more and more difficult to find them at a, at a decent price. Most of them are overpriced because some characters are more rare than the others. Anyhow, I'll start uh, talking about each of them now. So we'll start with Superman. These figures were actually made to be about the size of the vintage G.I. Joe, so I would say about three and a half, four inches tall, roughly. And uh, all of them would come with some action feature that's incorporated into the figure. In other words, along the same lines like the vintage Masters of the Universe. Uh, in the 80s, most of the toy lines had to have some kind of a gimmick or a action feature to make them more interesting to the kids. Anyway, Superman here came with a cloth cape and he had a let, uh, yellow letter S on the cape but it faded away over the years. The cape is removable so he can be displayed without it and usually the cape is the easiest thing to lose for most of the figures that came with the cape so that's why it's always better to try and keep an eye on it because it is very easy to lose it so it wasn't made of plastic back then or even a rubber it was actually cloth cape so which was good now articulation wise they were rather limited because those were the early days of the action figures relatively speaking so they, he does have articulation in the knees, he can bend his legs, and he can move his legs forward and backward about that much. Forward is a bit more limited. And of course he can move his arms somewhat, but the, limit, the movement of the arms is a bit limited due to the action feature which I will show you now. Practically his action feature is when you squeeze the legs together he will punch with his fists rapidly. So that's why the arms don't move as fast unless you squeeze the legs and activate the action feature. I would also mention the fact that he came packaged in two different uh, types of packaging. In Europe he was packaged in a wide card with a with a plastic bubble over it. He came with a mini comic book that shows a, a story about Superman fighting Lex Luthor. And it came also with a poster, a mini poster of Superman. Um, now I understand in North America, or specifically in Canada, uh, some, of the, some of these same characters like Superman, Batman, Robin, and a couple of other ones were sold on short cards. So the package was much smaller due to the cards being a lot shorter. So there is all sorts of variations out there depending on the country and the continent. And I understand in um, South America they were also released under a, a different, slightly different name. They were called Los Amigos. And there were some variations there. For example, they had a Riddler that was made out of a repainted Superman or Green Lantern. I'm not sure which. But one of them was used by the toy uh, companies there to create the Riddler, which was never part of the original lineup of superpowers. And that Riddler is rather rare these days, I understand, and can cost a lot of money. So anyway, that's as far as it goes with Superman. The next one I will talk about is Batman. And Batman here looks pretty much like in the superpowers show back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, he's wearing his gray and light blue costume, he also comes with a cloth cape that is removable. The, the uh, articulation is pretty much the same like Superman. Uh, but the colors are very vibrant as you can tell. And his action feature is similar. Or almost the same as Superman's. When you squeeze the legs, he can give a punch with his fists. So, that's as far as the Batman goes. Now... The next one I'm going to talk about 
would be Robin, which makes a lot of sense anyway, right after Batman to continue with Robin. Now, of course, this is Dick Grayson Robin, the very first Robin, the way he looked around that time, the 70s and 80s. Before he even became a Nightwing, he was a member of the Teen Titans. And he, this is his classic costume with the yellow cloth cape. Now, his action feature, well, articulation-wise, as usual, pretty much the same as, um, yeah, his arm can move up at least, uh, compared to Superman. The left arm. The um, right arm is spring-loaded for a reason. So... His action feature is that when you squeeze the legs, you, you're either going to squeeze the legs or squeeze the arms in most of these figures to activate the feature. In Robin, again, it's the legs. So when you squeeze it, he will give a karate chop with his right hand and clobber the bad guys with it. So that's as far as he goes, and I'll just show you uh, how they look side by side. Batman and Robin, very nicely done. And then, we're gonna move on to Aquaman. Aquaman, at least this one that I got back in Europe, came with a mini comic book, again, about Aquaman, one of his adventures, fighting Penguin together with Flash. And uh, he came with an Aquaman poster, a mini poster. The only thing missing in his case is his trident, unfortunately, I managed to lose that. Other than that, his action feature is activated differently. You gotta squeeze the arms, and then his legs will move. Now, you're wondering what's the feature if the legs move, what's the difference? Well, this will sort of mimic his swimming action in water. And uh, articulation-wise, he can pretty much move 360 degrees, the arms up and down. The heads are usually not movable, they're just molded that way. Even though it looks like they could move their heads, but my, my figures cannot. There is also articulation in the knees, and the legs can move that much forward and this much backward. Of course, no, no articulation in the chest or in the waist, so they were not done in the same way like modern toys, so they were very limited in articulation. Next one after that would be Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. The same Green Lantern that showed up in Super Friends and similar cartoon series from back then. He comes with a little lantern, power charging, uh, ring charging lantern. And uh, again, when you squeeze his legs, he will lift his arm, the right arm on which is the power ring. It's sculpted onto the finger. So he will do that when you squeeze the legs. He's very nicely done, again very vibrant colors, articulation is same old, same old as the rest, but he looks very nice. Those were the, uh, these particular DC heroes, excuse me, uh, were the latest craze when I was a kid, because there wasn't that many superhero toys back then, aside from the uh, superpowers for DC. And then Secret Wars for Marvel, which was around the same time. And they were about roughly more or less the same size as Superpowers, but they were produced by Mattel instead. Around the same time both lines came out. And the next one is Wonder Woman. This is one of the early figures of her from the Superpowers. She came with a mini lasso, which was more like a golden string. But of course, it got lost over time. But other than that, she is in good condition still and she's very well done now of course when you squeeze the legs you activate the power for her to block with her bracelets that are there to block the bullets so that's a very neat action feature at least it mimics one of her powers uh, the secret identity name of Wonder Woman is Diana Prince when she's on earth and uh, she was given different uh, things that she does in her secret identity. So in some cases she works as a, uh, works in a museum, at least according to the latest movies. In others, and at least in the old comic book, she worked, worked for the United Nations as a secretary. And then in the old TV series from the 60s with uh, 
uh, TV series back then, she was actually working as a secretary for uh, Major Steve Trevor. So she had different jobs. As each decade passed by, she was given different things to do. Anyway, that's as far as she goes. Now the next one is Flash. He is in, done in a very nice red color and of course with yellow belt and boots and he has his Flash insignia on the chest. Now in his case when you squeeze um, when you squeeze his arms he's mimicking his running feature or I mean his ability to run fast so that's what uh, what this feature is mimicking and it's done rather well he did not come with any accessories other than a mini comic book and I'm not sure about the poster uh, because this is a North American version and yes I forgot to mention this flash is supposed to be Barry Allen one of the first flashes uh, after the after Jay Garrick the first original flash now the other one we have is Martian Manhunter he came with a cloth cape and I believe if I'm not mistaken he is actually taller than other characters because he's supposed to be a bit taller in some cartoons they're portraying him like he's roughly the same height as everybody else but in reality he should be a bit taller than the other heroes now I'm trying to remember what his feature is um, uh, I cannot activate it maybe the oh there we go it's again with the legs when you squeeze the legs he will do fast punching with his fists some of the action features look like they're a little bit repetitive but honestly it, it's still a lot of fun for the early toys anyway because most of the action features do not exist in today's superhero toys, at least the ones for collectors. They were completely taken out. And uh, he has again the usual articulation. He's wearing his classic costume. And again, he's pretty well done. That's Martian Manhunter. The next in line is Red Tornado. Red Tornado. Um, comes again with a very nicely done cloth cape he wears his classical attire and he's appearing in his classical look and let me see oh his action feature is that when you squeeze unfortunately I think the feature doesn't work well anymore due to the, its age but when you squeeze the legs he's supposed to uh, twist twist in his waist and create his ability to uh, spin uh, in tornado fashion uh, pretty much like Cyclone from the Vintage Masters of the Universe same idea but unfortunately his uh, feature is a bit rusty that's why he doesn't work but you can see that the waist is a bit loose in order to activate uh, that action feature um, Again, the cape is removable, can be removed, but I do not suggest that due to the fact that, again, they can be easily lost. And Red Tornado is supposed to be a sort of a, a more of a robot than human, but he's on the side of the good guys. Next one uh, would be um, Firestorm. Firestorm showed up in the Super Friends cartoon series and he did had numerous appearances in for example Batman Brave and the Bold from one of the newer cartoons and then he showed up also in the uh, uh, present uh, ongoing TV series uh, on CW called the Legends of Tomorrow DC Legends of Tomorrow he's one of the main characters in the group of heroes who go through time trying to uh, correct inconsistencies in, in human history and all that sort of thing. He's supposed to be compromised of two people who when they join together uh, it's supposed to be uh, usually a, a football coach and a young student or a young student and um, 
uh, brilliant science professor, so they kept changing that idea as time went. In, or, in other words, for him to be able to uh, act as a hero, he needs a combination of the two minds. And uh, again, action feature has to do, again, with the legs when you squeeze them. He's giving uh, fast punches. So that would be uh, Firestorm. Uh, another one that's actually from the Justice Society of America. One of the only members of that group that actually happens to make it into the superpowers is Dr. Fate. He's missing his cape and the helmet is not removable, it's molded on. But he has very nice vibrant colors. And again the feature That feature is a bit rusty, I guess, because it doesn't seem to work. And if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be something to do uh, uh, with his arms, that he's lifting them up or uh, something of that sort, because he's more relying on magic rather than a physical strength. He's pretty much an equivalent to Doctor Strange, so he uses magic in his fight against demons and other magical threats out there. So I wish the feature would still work, so I would show you how that works, but unfortunately I think the feature died out. But anyway, at least you can see how he looks like. He's pretty well done. Very accurate to his comic book appearance. One of the other heroes I got here is Hawkman. Unfortunately, they never released Hawk Girl, so we only have him. And he, of course, appeared in numerous cartoons and so forth, and even in the early Super Friends cartoon series he was a member there. So his feature would be, well you guessed it correctly again, when you squeeze the legs, these wings at the back will move, as you can see, mimicking his uh, flight capability. He came with a mace, his magical mace. And the helmet is not removable. The wings are removable, but once you attach them, it's better to leave them that way. He comes from a planet Tanagar, and he's a Tanagarian. He came together with Hawk Girl, and then, of course, they became heroes. And uh, at any different point in time, according to the comics, they were either members of the Justice Society of America and then the members of the Justice League. Uh, his uh, secret identity is Carter Hall when he's not being Hawkman. At least in the Justice League Unlimited cartoon series, they explain that he's a Carter Hall and also uh, an archaeologist. I'm not sure if that was always his secret identity, but the Carter Hall name remains correct. The final character from the superpowers, at least from the good guys that I have, is. Oliver Queen, also known as Green Arrow. He came with a bow that actually is missing a string, but all the arrows uh, are actually molded in his quiver, so they cannot be removed. This is uh, Green Arrow's classic look. And again, the feature would be that when you squeeze the legs, he practically lifts his arms and mimics the ability of him to shoot his trick arrows. The other hand is molded as if it's holding an arrow, even though there is no arrow, and that hand cannot really hold one. But at least it's mimicking that idea. So that's as far as uh, Green Arrow goes. Again, a another very nicely done figure. Now onto the bad guys, and I don't have a lot of them, I only have four. The first one is Darkseid, the leader of uh, and the dictator of the planet Apocalypse, who's been always trying to and defeat Superman and conquer Earth. This is his early version, the way he looked in the superpowers. He's quite big in size, which is the way he's supposed to be. His eyes were made to be red, and then when you look through this uh, top part of his head, you can kind of, uh, in a way, sort of, uh, by looking, kind of see that his eyes are very red, and that would sort of, sort of mimic the idea of him uh, having his uh, uh, beams that come out of his eyes, which is one of his main powers that he would use to destroy his enemies. He has a lot of articulation, just like the rest of them. 
except in the arms, again as usual, there is no articulation in the elbows. He can actually do a, a big smash with both of his arms when you squeeze the legs. So this is what happens, he will just lift them and then smash them down on the enemy. And here is the size comparison of him and Superman from this line. He's quite, as you can tell, he's quite taller than Superman. And you can see when I get it a bit closer, his eyes are gro glowing red. Because they were made of a translucent red plastic. The next one in line is Lex Luthor. Uh, not in his business suit, because that's an extremely boring look. But in his uh, famous battle armor. That contains uh, kryptonite laser and that sort of thing in his, in his uh, chest area. Uh, the armor is removable, but I would rather not remove it, but it can be removed. You just pull it off over the head. And uh, his action feature is not working anymore, unfortunately. But the idea is that when you press the legs, um, he would sort of lift one of the arms, uh, the left one, and sort of mimic his flight feature that he has as a part of this suit. This suit it made him really famous because he wore it through so many different cartoons and comics and that's the way I remember him when I see him in a business suit I find that extremely boring look. But yeah, and he also had a, a vehicle that was sold separately from him from the superpowers line which was called Lexor. It's kind of like his uh, jet flying vehicle that he can sit in it. So that would be uh, Lex Luthor from the Superpowers. And then, of course, Batman cannot go without Joker, so this is the Joker figure from Superpowers. He has a great deal of articulation, and then the coat tails can be removed, but I prefer to hold them on, because again, they can easily get lost. He came with a mini comic book, and of course he came with his famous mullet that he hits enemies with. And you can sort of tell What's interesting, this mallet is actually in the shape of Joker's face, and Joker's nose here is the actual handle of the mallet. So that's kind of funny and interesting, but when he clobbers somebody, he can hit him with the flat surface, or he can hit them with a the hollow surface, so that he kind of uh, blocks their sight and whatnot when he pops them on the head with it. Now, the feature for him is that when, okay, you're probably gonna say yes, yes, let me guess, you're gonna say when you squeeze his legs, yes, it's true, when you squeeze his legs, as usual, when you squeeze his legs, he will bring down the mallet and smash the enemy on the head. Let's just see how would that work as an example here. Let's take Dr. Fate to get clobbered, if I can make him stand, there we go. So, this is what happens. There, direct hit on the, on the on the noggin. So yeah, that's a rather fun feature because you can point anybody on the head with that thing. Now the last one I have in the collection of the superpowers bad guys is Penguin, another classic enemy of Batman and Robin. He's missing his coat tails, just like Joker he has the detachable ones and unfortunately they got lost. But he has a very neat looking umbrella because his major weapons are umbrellas that he turns into weapons. Now what's interesting about it, the umbrella itself has a feature. There is a little nudge here on the handle. Well, when you slide it up along the handle of the umbrella itself, um, there will be a huge spike coming right out of the middle that he uses as a sword when he fights Batman. So that's very neatly done, because in the comics and in the cartoons, that's pretty much what he does. He can make Umbrella into a sword, or he can make Umbrella into a machine gun shooting bullets. So he's able to turn any Umbrella into a deadly weapon. And then, of course, when you slide the knob down, he will be able to uh, retract the blade back in. Now, aside from that, he came with a mini comic book, as, mo as all of these characters did. And he's appearing in his classic looks, meaning as a portly fat gentleman 
with a very outdated costume which is pretty much like a tuxedo which he wore pretty much from his creation in the comics back in the 1930s before World War II but I still like this costume and he doesn't look scary in any way he just looks a bit funny but he can be very deadly he usually has penguin uh, penguin robots and real penguins as his um, uh, pets around and of course he has a bunch of tugs working for him now one of the features again involving legs as usual when you squeeze the legs of penguin he will be able to lift his umbrella like so um, to sort of mimic the idea that he can use it as a shield or that he can actually mimic his power of flight because he's using umbrellas to fly so if he points it in the sky then he can pretty much fly or at least mimic the idea of flying and of course that's why the umbrella is spinning on top because that would uh, pretty much act as a sort of umbrella helicopter for him to escape that's how he moves around because when it comes to running he won't really do much due to his size he's quite wide in appearance so the only way to get himself across is to just use the umbrella and the flight feature of it. Anyway, that's all the figures I got so far. I never managed to find more. However, they are out there and available and, of course, at very high prices these days. But this line was rather popular and it lasted for as long as it could. The Kenner had other ideas how to prolong the line, but unfortunately by 1986, 1987, the retailers were becoming disinterested in obtaining any further superpowers and the line came to an end which was such a sad thing to see because we could have gotten um, Dark Sides for Trissel Doom as a playset and even though we didn't get it there were so many other characters they were planning to include like the Teen Titans and the Justice Society and then of course more bad guys and they even had a planned uh, idea for the uh, their version of DC females meaning the superhero ones and uh, and the evil ones they had a complete idea in place and this would have been way before the DC superhero girls of today this was an ancient idea from back then but unfortunately none of it none of it came true due to lack of interest from the retail but even so even though none of those ideas managed to shape up there's still a lot of these figures of the characters that did get made, such as, uh, for example, Plastic Man and Captain Marvel, and uh, other characters who are henchmen of Darkseid, um, and a couple of other bad guys like Mr. Freeze, and uh, other superheroes as well. And aside from that, there were also a bunch of vehicles released, some for the good guys, some for the bad guys. Uh, there was a, a big destroyer vi flying vehicle released for Kalibak and Darkseid. And also there was a vehicle released for Superman. Uh, it would be like a Superman's plane, although I don't really see why he needs it when he can fly. And there was also a Justice League Joker, which would uh, pretty much be used by any of the superhero figurines. And then there was also uh, the Hall of Justice playset, which is a very nicely done one, and I never had one so far but I've seen pictures it looks pretty good and you can accommodate most of the figurines and it has a lot of action features in it and aside from that there was also a Kalibak boulder vehicle as well so there were quite some at least when it came to that and um, it's still uh, an impressive line even after all this time and as I said it's becoming more and more difficult to find them at an acceptable price because now everything is getting blown out of proportion these days so anyway that's my coverage for you guys for the uh, vintage DC superpowers line and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see to it that I uh, give you a coverage of something new again next time thanks for watching bye